Good evening. There is an increased police presence in a number of towns and cities across the country tonight, where far-right protesters have been gathering. We've been clear to the police that they have our full backing in taking the strongest possible action against perpetrators. Thousands of people have taken part in a far-right protest in central London this afternoon, led by activist Tommy Robinson. There's also been an anti-racist counter-protest nearby. Hey fam, welcome and welcome back to one and done today we've got a great video thanks to jake from rattlesnake tv i enjoy his videos they're very well extremely insightful i follow him and i suggest you do the same and today's video is all about the uk and the riots that have taken place there's great division that's been caused by the migrant crisis and it's a sad day to see our brothers and sisters in such turmoil in the uk now you haven't seen me for a few days because I had an eye infection and I couldn't even look at the computer, but I am back. And before we jump in, don't forget to hit that like, smash the subscribe, ring the notification bell, share this video far and wide, and without delay, let's roll that tape. Welcome back to Rattlesnake TV, guys. Some very, very dark times at the moment. We're gonna be covering the riots today that have been taking place across England. And just to be straight up with you all, I mean, normally we can have a bit of a laugh on this channel and we can cover the news and debates and events and cultural events that are happening with a more digestible and entertaining and at times comedic, I hope, way. And we can have a bit of fun with it. But today is the first time maybe ever that I've had a feeling of dread and just concern in the pit of my stomach about the direction in which the world is heading in. Normally I'm pretty optimistic about things, albeit I hope discerning, but with the riots that are happening in Britain at the moment, I mean, a place that I care a lot about, I'm a citizen of Britain, my dad's family is all from there, I'm a passport holder. And also with the rising tensions that are happening in the Middle East with Russia mobilizing and America sending ships to that region of the world. The U.S. is deploying more fighter jets and warships to the Middle East to help defend Israel from possible retaliatory attacks by Iran and its proxies. The aircraft carrier Theodore Roosevelt has reportedly left the Strait of Hormuz just 10 kilometers off the coast of Iran. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin has also sent cruisers and destroyers equipped with ballistic missiles. It's almost like they're in a rush before maybe Trump gets in to get this all happening. Now, one of the things that Trump says is that this would never happen under him, but we're seeing it happen right now. The region. And then also crashes in the stock market. Things are looking very, very bleak at the moment. So we'll cover a bit of that in today's video, but with a main focus on the riots. And I'm going to talk about this in as much detail as I possibly can, but I also have to be very careful because YouTube has certain regulations and I can't say and do and show certain things because in the best case scenario this video could get taken down so as you guys would have seen especially if you've been on twitter cities across england have been in a state of total bedlam across the last week there are riots breaking out across the country and if you listen to the british government and the british media what they'll tell you is that the reason that these riots are happening is because of far-right extremists and racists in the country. Good evening. There is an increased police presence in a number of towns and cities across the country tonight, where far-right protesters have been gathering. We've been clear to the police that they have our full backing in taking the strongest possible action against perpetrators. And because online people are stirring up hate, like Tommy Robinson and Nigel Farage and Andrew Tate, Thousands of people have taken part in a far-right protest in central London this afternoon, led by activist Tommy Robinson. There's also been an anti-racist counter-protest nearby. But the things that they all fail to mention are the three little girls who were brutally murdered, stabbed to death, and many more injured by a boy whose parents are of Rwandan descent at a Taylor Swift dance class. This is just the latest in a long, long string of incidents. And when these incidents happen, the media tends to cover it up and the government tends to blame racism. Just last week, Lieutenant Colonel Mark Teton, father of two, serviceman, was stabbed for no reason by this doctor or architect. And Mark is currently fighting for his life, but at least he has a chance at life. Lee Rigby was hacked to death in 2013 by two Nigerian terrorists outside of the Royal Barracks. He was also serving his country. The 23 people, including children, that were blown up 
at the Manchester Arena at the Ariana Grande concert never stood a chance. Salman Abedi blew himself up after an Ariana Grande concert. Mr Lawler says he had a bad feeling about him, but there was nothing to really justify that feeling. He also says he was scared of being wrong and branded a racist. I mean, this is horrific. The fact that, you know, they're upset at people like Andrew Tate, Tommy Robinson that actually says things, speaks out maybe against the government and their weak policies and their weak leadership, and they put a lot of time and energy into trying to cancel these people. But then you see this sort of thing happen, and they, these people are able to, you know, get themselves organised and set these attacks up. Just seems ludicrous. Nor did those at London Bridge, for that matter. We head overseas now. There are new images of the heroic takedown on the London Bridge. Heroes stepping up with makeshift whip weapons, you see it here, to stop a convicted terrorist who went on a rampage, killing two people with a knife. The attacker, Usman Khan, was killed by police at the scene. The authorities say he had ties with Al-Qaeda and was recently released from prison, serving half of a 16-year sentence. In this BBC interview from 2008, Khan denied he was an extremist. Like these labels, what they're putting on, like terrorist, this, that, they will know I I know terrorist. And the story goes on and on and on. And what did the police do? Cover it up, scared to be called racist. And the media, scared to be called racist. He was scared of being wrong and branded a racist. And so the British people have been gaslit, insulted and trampled on for decades. That is crazy. That's why truth is so important. That is why free speech, freedom of speech is so important. You should be able to vo um, voice your opinions on uh, these groups and these people without fear of repercussion. Now, your claim should be substantiated, and judging from what Jake's showed us so far, there's plenty to go on. There are plenty of facts and evidence to point these things out. No hope in sight, just demoralization. They're forced to sit by and watch as they become minorities in their own country. And whilst those in power who are meant to have their best interests in mind not only don't care for their concerns, they insult them for having those concerns. And so what do you know? It's now culminated in mass violence across the country between ethnic groups. Shocker. I mean, those of you guys who have been watching the channel for a while will understand that as much as this is terrible news, it's no surprise to me whatsoever. Because the cold hard fact of the matter is that Christian European countries have been arcallied by immigration for the past few decades, especially since the outbreak of the war in the Middle East post 9-11. The destabilization of countries like Iraq, Syria and Afghanistan caused a migrant crisis that flowed into Europe. I promised myself I'd never go back to Iraq because in Iraq we are neither physically safe nor economically secure. The Western-backed overthrowing of Gaddafi in Libya, which was hitherto where displaced Africans would go to work. An American drone operated from Las Vegas alerts NATO. It spots a convoy of 80 cars fleeing south from CERT. French fighter jets respond with an airstrike, taking out two of the vehicles. It's still unclear if they hit Gaddafi's car, but when rebels pour in, they tell the BBC's Gabriel Gatehouse he was hiding in this drainage pipe. And the only thing blocking millions of Africans from flooding into Europe, because Gaddafi had an arrangement with the Europeans, that Libya would block people from using Libya as a port to Europe, caused the migrant crisis from Africa into Europe. Thousands of Africans risk the dangerous journey across the Sahara to Libya, but if they make it to Tripoli, many of them then attempt to cross the Mediterranean to Italy or Malta. But after the deal with Colonel Gaddafi, migrants' boats are now intercepted and sent back to Libya. Thanks to the policy, Italy says there's been a 90% drop in immigrants arriving on its shores. During this time, we've seen the greatest civilizations to ever exist, Christian Europe, open their borders and let in millions and millions of refugees. This problem being exasperated when people from poor countries looking for economic opportunities saw what was happening, that the liberal elites in Europe were allowing everybody and anybody to roll in and they decided they'd come too. So as well as refugees fleeing war-torn countries, you also have economic migrants that are taking advantage of the system. I mean, these people come all the way to the United Kingdom. To get to the UK from the Middle East, you have to go through Turkey, then all the way through Central Europe, into Western Europe, France, and then get on a boat across the English Channel, where you'll be welcomed with a nice hotel and a debit card with a bit of cash and some dental care, plus more. Wow. I mean, why else would people come all the way to the United Kingdom and not stop in 
another European country and stay there. And yeah, well, look, you incentivize the behavior that you want to see. And obviously, this is the behavior that you're seeing. Now, the problem is with these people fleeing these war-torn countries, now you feel for them, but really what needs to be done is either neighboring countries need to take them in, and then European countries can help um, resettle them, whether that's going in to provide security, uh, money, and aid. Now, these people that have left these war-torn countries, they are living a completely different life to people in the West. Now, people in the West, they get upset if they get caught in traffic. They get upset if their latte is a little cold. These people from these countries have been put in life and death situations on the daily. And a lot of the times if they need something, they have to take it. Not saying all, of course, but this is the sort of lifestyle that they are exposed to. This is the desperation. This is the lifestyle, the desperation that they have in the countries they come from. Unless there was serious incentive to go all the way to the United Kingdom. And all of this is happening whilst people in England are having a major housing crisis. Their cities look like crap. I was there just recently. I lived in London for three years. English people are becoming minorities in their own cities and they're being bombarded week in, week out with new heinous stories about how migrants are committing these crimes. And not to mention the gangs that are taking over these cities. I mean, violent criminal gangs and also grooming gangs. And this is not just gaslighting on social media. Like I said, I lived there. I've seen this. I lived in Hackney in East London. I've experienced firsthand how dangerous it is to just walk around East London at night time. And of course this is happening. A 15 year old girl has been stabbed to death in the rush hour in South London. Two teenagers have been sentenced to life in prison at Leeds Crown Court uh, for the murder of a 15 year old boy and a 21 year old man who was stabbed to death at the Notting Hill Carnival. I mean, what do you think is gonna happen when you take people from war-torn countries, people that have lived around war and suffering and instability their whole lives. I mean, that affects you. What do you think is going to happen when you just plonk them in white Christian Britain and you just say, okay, now you guys just be friends, especially when you consider that in many cases, the regions that these people come from are the very regions that the West decided to drop democracy bombs on for a pointless war. Many of these people will already have an inbuilt resentment towards the cultures that they're coming to. And then in terms of the economic migrants, I mean, the fact of the matter is that these are people who are coming from very low socioeconomic backgrounds. That's why they're fleeing. This means that they're much more likely to be criminals because that's just how the world works. Like Trump says, they're not sending their best. And all the while, pathetic cowardice Globalist European leaders just let this happen. They oversaw the destruction of their countries. And of course, they knew all along that this was bound to happen. Speaking of one such leader is Britain's newly elected Prime Minister of the Labour Party, Keir Starmer. Now, before we get into this part, what I want to say is one of the things I love about Jake's presentation is that he's very logically sound. He's a common sense thinker and whenever I watch his commentary it really looks unbiased looks and sounds unbiased he really just wants to get to the truth and the heart of the matter now even Stevie Wonder can see what the issues are anyone with a drop of common sense can explain to you what the issues are anyone that's thought about the stuff for half a second can explain to you what the issues are a lot of it's to do with meddling and the US has to take a lot of responsibility for that like you said, dropping democracy bombs. The only way you can successfully spread democracy is through example and leadership. You can't enforce it because maybe it doesn't align with their um, religious and moral values, particularly the US style of democracy, where you could argue what it is really is degeneracy. Let's listen to what he had to say about the riots. Be it no doubt, I was shocked. Those that have participated in this the violence killing of George Floyd will face the full and the force response of the law. President Trump, the police and the US will be making arrests. To the peaceful individuals will be held to people on rightly remand. demanding justice. Charges will follow has been an affront to and humanity. convictions. Will the last follow. week has shone a spotlight. I guarantee on the racism. You will regret taking part in this disorder and injustice whether directly experienced or those, those whipping from up this action and minority online ethnic communities and then in the US away themselves. In the UK. This is not and across protest. the world. It is organized King violent thuggery. Injustice anywhere. And it has no is a place threat to justice. On our I bet Rishi Sunak is sitting back in his mansion right now, probably with a tea, thinking to himself 
She's all yours, Mr. Starmer. You really got your hands full there, buddy. Enjoy. But make no mistake, guys, this is all by design. This isn't because the European leaders were just too kind and blissfully naive and thought that everybody would just come together in the new melting pot and all hold hands and sing songs. A place where all religions can come together and live as one. No. This kind of multiculturalism has never worked and will never work. Societies need to be organized under a unified value structure or else there is chaos. And actually, the rest of the world understands this and they don't see the world and see human nature through this liberal elitist globalist melting pot lens. You can live in Japan, you can have kids in Japan, but if you're not of Japanese blood, you will never be Japanese. During the World Cup in Qatar, they made it very clear how they felt about the LGBTQ flags. They said, keep your gay liberalism out of our culture. This haram. Just before we get into this part, I feel as though there's going to be one huge reset coming. Like Jake said, this liberalism, where we don't know what a boy is, we don't know what a girl is, this sort of stuff. There's going to be some huge reset if we don't sort this stuff out quick smart. Now, you can be critical on the West. The West has made a gazillion mistakes and injustices. But just remember, people are fleeing to these countries, not fleeing from them. And there's a reason that they're fleeing to the countries. Have a think about it. Yes, haram. Yeah, haram. Yeah, 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 yeah. haram. Yeah, haram. Eine Sünde. So he would say for me, why are you doing it? But do you think gay is... Sie finden schwul sein ist haram? Ja, es ist haram. Ich bin kein strenger Muslim. Aber warum ist es haram? Es ist ein geistiger Schaden. It's only the West that has been tricked into this complete sire. Now, obviously... I condemn any form of political violence. It's wrong to target police officers. It's wrong to target migrant centers where innocent, terrified workers are just trying to do their job. And it's wrong to be violent towards your fellow citizen. But unfortunately, when there are events like this, and it always happens, there are going to be young, red-blooded men who see a bit of chaos, want to go break a few windows, burn some shit, and loot some stores and get some free shoes or whatever. But all this does is give the government and the media the ammo that they need to paint the whole entire movement as far-right, violent, thug extremism. And it instantly takes away the attention from the underlying issues that caused the protest in the first place. And it's a shame because I really thought that there was actually progress being made. Just last week, we had Tommy Robinson organize a massive protest through the streets of London. <laughs> And it seemed organized and coordinated and peaceful, and that's the way that it should be. That's the sort of thing that elevates the voice of the people, elevates the voice of the unheard. And when you do mass peaceful protests like that, it gives credibility to your ideas. Lighting fires, breaking windows, and assaulting people does the opposite. And we're seeing a lot of this at the moment. If you look at the videos on Twitter, for example, you have people from both sides. You have people who are protesting on the English side, and you have Islamists on the street, all out in gangs, looking for each other and looking for trouble and trouble they will find. So obviously it goes without saying that political violence should be condemned, but it almost feels useless to say at the moment because the Rubicon has been crossed and both sides have mobilized and it really doesn't seem like there's a way back from this. I mean, it might well fizzle out over the coming days, but then the next one will probably be worse than this one, whenever that is. But I just want to stress this one point and it's important to remember for anybody who's thinking of doing something stupid. When it comes to situations like this, you are not BLM. The government is not going to pander to you and spread their cheeks for you. This will not be labeled as the summer of love. You will not have Kamala Harris to bail you out. What will happen though, is just like the J6s, they will make an example of you and they will throw the book at you. These violent riots are not planned. There is not a goal in mind. They're not gonna achieve anything politically. They will just fuel chaos and it will give the government the grounds that they need and the grounds that they want to crack down even further on speech in England and to censor internet activity 
and to lock up and debank dissidents. And I mean, I definitely don't have any answers. I'm very blackpilled about this situation if I'm totally honest. I'm not gonna say that everybody needs to unify because that's not going to happen. They needed to stop mass immigration over a decade ago, probably more. They needed to stop the endless wars a long time ago. They needed to promote national pride and assimilation in Christian European countries, but they didn't. But what I will say is to not get too distracted and not take your eye off the real enemy. That being the liberal globalist elites. They are the ones who want open borders. They are the ones who sit atop the global financial institutions like BlackRock, and they are the ones who ultimately wield power. The only way to move forward and achieve anything is through a more sophisticated political mobilization, through online journalism and activism and large peaceful gatherings. This kind of violence with the peasants fighting amongst each other is like their wet dream, and it gives them the pretext to do whatever they want to you in the interests of public safety. What they really, really fear is masses of people waking up to what's really going on, not fighting amongst each other, not breaking windows, but pointing the finger directly at the elites responsible for this mayhem. There really are people out there in positions of power who profit off this chaos. The world is moving closer and closer to World War III. Iran and Israel are currently at a boiling point. The US and Russia have both mobilized in case of escalation, which is looking more and more likely. Just today, the global stock markets and the crypto market have had a massive dip. And at the very same moment, defense contract giant Lockheed Martin's stock went up significantly. And they don't want us to notice this. They would like us distracted. See, Jake just laid it all out there for us. He's 100% right. People that are going out protesting and thinking they're, you know, they, they've got an excuse or a reason to be breaking windows and causing mayhem. You really are going against the greater cause. You need self-control. You need to stay focused. This is a sad day, folks. Our brothers and sisters in the UK are in a terrible place at the moment. Unfortunately, we could see this coming and we can see it coming in other countries in the West as well if they don't pull their pants up. And they do want you to stay dumb. They do want you to say nothing to see here. Well, they want to say nothing to see here. Now with the migrant crisis situation, they really have let the cat out of the bag. It is hard to see how they can rewind that back. I think first thing they can do, however, is these people that do commit the crimes that have come from overseas that are migrants, they do need to set examples there, whether it's deportation. Now, none of this stuff is ideal. You want everyone to get along peacefully. You want everyone just to, you know, have the same intentions just to thrive and prosper. But it's very difficult to see that happening now. Now, once again, thanks, Jake, for putting a great video out. Um, I'm going to put a link to the full video in the description. As usual, leave your comments in the comment section. I'll jump in there when I can. And don't forget to hit that like, smash the subscribe, ring the notification bell. Share this video far and wide and I'll catch you in the next video.